Okay, so this is what uh, I'll, I'll be talking about today. Um, uh, th this, this is a continuing uh, from the uh, Genjo Koan. Uh, this is a, a very, uh, this is the, um, uh, this is the uh, epiphany, you might say, of the Genjo Koan. This is the nitty gritty. And uh, although it looks like it's uh, a little hairy, but it's that, it is that though, nitty gritty part. Anyway, so I'm going to, I'm going to um, uh, read it first, the whole thing. I'll, I'll read the, the, uh, the uh, text from Dogen here. Now, if a bird or fish tries to reach the end of its element before moving in it, remember from before uh, we had, you know, last, last time that I was, I was talking, you talked about a bird, you know, a, a, a bird, uh, uh, a, a bird swims, I mean, a bird flies in the air, uh, but it doesn't know that it's flying in the air. And, and but it, it never f fully reaches the end of it. So, oh, this is right here, actually. And a fish swims in, in, in the same way. But this is also about, about people. But so anyway, so I'll go back here. Uh, this bird or fish will not find its way or its place. When you find your place where you are, practice occurs, actualizing the fundamental point. When you find your way at this moment, practice occurs, actualizing the fundamental point. For the place, the way, is neither big nor small, neither self nor other. It has not been arrived, not been carried over from the past, and it is not merely arising now. Accordingly, in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, meaning one thing is mastering it, doing one practice is practicing completely. Here is the place, here the way unfolds. The boundary of realization is not distinct, for the realization comes forth simultaneously with the mastery of Buddha Dharma. Do not suppose that what you realize becomes your knowledge and is grasped by your consciousness. Although actualized immediately, the inconceivable may not be distinctly apparent. Its appearance is beyond your knowledge. So let me begin here. Uh, when we're sitting, uh, we're not concerned with our thoughts, of course. Uh, finally, fittingly, one current understanding of the function of meditation is that it provides a respite or respite from the pressures on us by helping to reduce our stress. It is likely true that the less thoughts we have, the less stress we will feel. And sitting helps people calm down by giving them a break from their thinking. And of course, there's much more to it than that, but that's just one sentence here. Another common understanding of meditation, that it is done to get enlightened. While the idea that it might set our head straight forever in this way is an appealing one. Uh, such a desire to get something out of sitting uh, may itself be a cause of our suffering. Finally, Thinking about why we meditate is absurd and that when doing it, we specifically don't pay attention to our thoughts. Koan Zen, Rinzai Zen, even uses thinking against itself by getting sitters to suffer from the effect of thinking about exclusively enlightenment. We ourselves are taught to let thoughts in when sitting, but not to treat them as anything special. It is in ordinary life that we are more apt to let thoughts define us or tend to overthink things. Dogen now says in the following part of the Genjo Koan that realization is actualized by our being present beyond thought. Previously, I, I mentioned uh, that uh, there's uh, realization and then there's 
actualizing realization. And there are different stages. And this stage, particularly here today, is about actualizing realization. Now, if a bird or fish tries to reach the end of its element before moving in it, this bird or fish will not find its way or its place. Uh, this is saying that outside of our everyday life, we will not find our place, which is where we are in each moment, nor the way which is what we are doing in each moment. There is no enlightenment outside of our being where we are. This, this means that there is no enlightenment outside of our being where we are right now or are doing what we are doing right now. Thus, when you find your place where you are, practice occurs actualizing the fundamental point, which by the way, fundamental point is a translation for Genjo Cohen. Using a different translation, not, not um, uh, um, anyway, uh, not finding your place where you are, but making this place your very own, making this place your very own, instead makes it easier to recognize that this is concerned with the distinction between subject and object. In some cases, me and you. In other cases, me and my uh, me and my world. Okay. Uh, then um, you you understand that 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 the distinction is between subject and object disappearing, so that we and our lives are not two. When you find your way to at this moment, practice occurs, actualizing the fundamental point, likewise refers to a oneness between us and what we are doing. The place, the way, is neither big nor small, neither self nor other. Uh, uh, that, that 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 meaning of the place the way is neither big nor small the self nor other in that in this place or in this way there is no differentiation no differentiation exists such as of size or of inside us or outside us. We are, when we are absorbed in doing something completely, we are not aware of being different from it. We are not only not aware of being different from it, we become it. Then no thoughts of self are involved. So, my feeling of when, when we're doing something, the feeling of me or I, when, or me in this case, I guess, is not existent. It's just not there. You're really concentrating on, on what you're doing. And that's when inside and outside are no longer two. Uh, we also experience this. Uh, inside and outside being not two. Okay. When meditating without thinking even about our knees or other parts of our body. When you're when you're when you're deep in meditation, or at least you know, and you're and you're not have no self concerns. You are not. That's when self and other have ceased to be two. With no separation between us and our world, true ha practice can happen. Which lead to the fundamental point, Genjo Koan, being actualized. Dogen continues, for the place, the way, has not been carried over from the past, and it is not 
it is not merely ar arising now. For the place, the way now, right? The place is where you are or what you're facing, your world. The way, of course, is Buddha way here. But <coughs> those things are not carried over from the past and is not really arising now. This means that neither where we are nor what we do has existed before now, nor, nor is it presently coming into existence. Though, as with firewood and ash previously in the Genjo Koan, the past and the present are independent of each other. Today is today and yesterday was yesterday. Not only is today completely not yesterday, nor every day a new day, but also yesterday, today, and new day are merely concepts and do not really exist. Even the present, which is what Genjo itself means, cannot be brand new, that is, exist, but newly, as newly minted, as there is, of course, nothing in the undifferentiated oneness. An example of one place where we can be sure that we are not in oneness is in daily life when multitasking. When we are trying to be in the present, then we are trying to be in the present uh, in two ways at once. We're trying to live two lives at the same time. It would be like trying to continue to count one's breaths in zazen while thinking about something else. Having thoughts come up but are not going back to one to start over because we can still remember where we were in the count is definitely not conducive to practice occurring. In accordingly, in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, uh, let me look, I should probably point that out when I go. Uh, yeah, right here. You can, you can see my cursor. So accordingly, in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, is that big enough for you? I can make that bigger. Here it goes. I'm sorry. That's better. It's uh, good. Okay. Um, accordingly, in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, practice enlightenment I'll be working on in a bit. It's a very important Dogen term, and so therefore is of, is of use to us. Accordingly, in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, not because Dogen is our ancestor, etc., 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 but because you can pretty much trust what he says. I mean, I, I say pretty much because there's nothing that we trust completely, but 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 that it's earned and Dogen. We can understand him. Uh, never, 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 never betrays us, and so that's why we study him. Not because he's some historical character, or great, great Zen master, blah blah blah. Okay. So anyway, accordingly, uh, uh, accordingly, in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, meeting one thing is mastering it. Doing one practice is practicing completely. I mean, I'm going to go that back to a second, but let me double back a little bit here. Is in all these cases where we don't say there is no, the past doesn't exist, the future doesn't exist, the present doesn't exist. What this refers to is 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 the is is our is our mind before it is full of thoughts. So our mind, as, a, as the word was used before and in the past here in my talks, differentiation. You also could say discrimination, but and which of both are equally useful terms. Discrimination, however, has a certain, well, a bad meaning for us. But differentiation is kind of neutral, so, so I, I, I use that. But so that this is the state of meditation where there's no longer you, and there's no longer the world. Okay. 
but it's not just meditation, because what we're talking about here is going to be more than meditation. Let me continue here. According, okay, so I'm talking about um, accordingly in the in the uh, in the in the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way, meeting one thing is mastering it, doing one practice is practicing completely. Meeting one thing refers to the place, short place the way, while doing one practice re refers to the way, to the Dharma. Be it dishes or a dirty toilet, we should face whatever it is, whatever it is with an accepting mind. Such an openness is necessary for mastering to take place. So meeting one thing is mastering it. This is, this is the part about practicing occurs. Uh, more simply put, this such an opening is necessary, such an openness is necessary for mastering to take place. More simply put, when you sit, just sit. When you are sick, just be sick. You just face, you just face, and you do what, what is the natural thing to do. Likewise, whatever practice we are doing should be taken as being done with all of the Buddha Dharma, Dogen has said here. This mastering and practicing completely brings us to or close to experiencing the practice enlightenment of the Buddha way. Practice enlightenment is a word that Dogen created out of the two out of two Chinese characters to represent the inseparability of the relative and the absolute, or form and emptiness, or in our case here, practice and enlightenment. It should be clear from the above or I should have made it clear from the above, perhaps, that there's no enlightenment, but that the enlightenment follows practice. Indeed, there is no enlightenment without practice. Practice follows enlightenment because where we begin, because we begin with the encouragement of the inner Buddha nature that all living things share. Life could even be considered a synonym for enlightenment, as our true identity comes from be our being a part of life in being alive. Practice enlightenment itself is an expression for totally and intimately leading our lives. This being so, being completely ourselves is to be a Buddha. It may sound special putting it this way, but there's nothing special about it. We are merely living our lives. Yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, John Deveron was with us, was with us, I think he's still there, um, uh, texted me out of, as it were, nowhere, Suzuki Roshi, when your practice is calm and ordinary, everyday life itself is enlightenment. That's a perfect personification of what my talk is today. Came to me from John and Suzuki Roshi. Okay. Repeating again the, net, the last paragraph here. Here is the place, here the way unfolds. Remember the place is, is, uh, is uh, where you are or we're in, in the moment, the way is the practice that you're doing. The boundary of realization is not distinct. For the real, this is now Dogen, right? So let me, let me go back and go, on, go and point it out to you. Here is the place, here is the way unfolds. The, the boundary of realization is not distinct. For the realization comes forth simultaneously with a mastery a Buddha Dharma. Do not suppose that what you realize becomes your knowledge and is grasped by your consciousness. Although actualized immediately, the inconceivable may not be distinctly apparent. Its appearance is beyond your knowledge.
here is the place, here the way unfolds, that is, practice begins from where we are in the moment. But Dogen be goes on to warn us not to expect to be aware of realization. As the bound, as now quoting again, the boundary of realization is not distinct, for the realization comes forth simultaneously with the mastery of Buddha Dharma. This is why Dogen combined enlightened uh, practice, made the word practice enlightenment. Those two represent, well, I'm going to be saying it again here, so I'll, I'll skip that, but we represent the, un, the known and the unknown. Realization, of course, is the unknown. Practice is something that we know. Uh, although, so therefore, the boundary is not distinct, for realization comes forth simultaneously with the mastery of Buddha Dharma. Buddha Dharma comes first, and, and realization, I mean, practicing deeply comes first. Right? Although realization occurs, real, occurs spontaneously with practicing completely, unlike practice, realization is not comprehensible. So as we cannot tell where it begins and ends. Therefore, do not suppose that what you realize becomes your knowledge and is grasped by your consciousness. As shown previously, realization cannot be known, for that would transform it into form through differentiation, solidifying it, as it were. Although actualized immediately, the inconceivable, quote, quote here again, although actualized immediately, the inconceivable may not be distinctly apparent. Its appearance is beyond our knowledge. Remember, knowledge is a, is a result of discrimination, of differentiation. Remember again from last week, last time I spoke, uh, that uh, all five, that, that Avalokiteshvara says, you know, realized that all five skandhas are empty. The, skanda, the skandhas are where uh, discrimination begins. That's, that's their function. They make it into something for us, for our consciousness. So therefore, going, going back to a second, although actualized immediately, the inconceivable, that is the realization part of, of practice realization, practice enlightenment. Uh, although actualized immediately, the inconceivable may not be distinctly apparent. Its appearance is beyond our knowledge, up on the screen there. Adds that all, although spontaneously actualized through practice, realization remains undifferentiated. Un undifferentiated. And so we are kept from perceiving whether it is there or not. One, in this case, cannot become two without one being lost. While realization is thus may not thus be apparent to us, to practice one thing is to practice everything, even without our knowing it. That is, where there is practice, which we know, there is also realization, although it is unknowable to us. Today, we'll, we, we will be celebrating Buddha's birthday, Chakamuni Buddha's birthday, and Jane and I will have to take the place of everyone in giving the baby Buddha its ceremonial first bath after our, after our service. He, Buddha, was reported to have said after taking his first steps, I and the great earth and all living beings attain the way at the same time. Mountains, rivers, grasses, and trees all have become Buddha. I and the great earth and all living beings attain the way at the same time. Mountains, rivers, grasses, and trees have all become Buddha. 
So of course, happy birthday. Thank you. Okay, let me pull over Jane here. Or pull me over to Jane. All right. Seat here. Still haven't gotten here yet. All right, here we are. Put you up. Put. I'm gonna go back to it. Where I'll go stop the share screen. Okay, there we are. Okay. Oh, do you have any? Uh, that's rather difficult. That's a rather difficult talk, I think. Uh, so, uh, but ultimately, everything is very simple. So, please uh, uh, say something. Hmm. Yes, yes, Mike. Funny oh, when you were mentioning about when I was listening to your talk about this, it reminded me the other day that I was sitting out in the yard in the sun, crawling across my gravel on my hands and knees and pulling weeds. And that's all it was. There was nothing else I was thinking about. I wasn't sitting there going, wow, I'd rather be inside where it's cooler or I should be taking care of this. I was just the act of pulling weeds. Is that along the lines of what you're saying? You just be where you are doing whatever you're doing and fully be involved with it and that is actually a form of meditation by itself definitely i i i'm, I'm i like pulling weeds for, for that reason and i don't <laughs> because it, because you know I, I don't think about it i don't think about anything like you you, you know you're just doing something and no thoughts no no big deal but you know it's just it's that's that's what you're doing it's it, it's that is your function at that time so it, it's the action is almost like meditating because you're not aware of anything else i mean you are aware but you're not paying attention to anything else you're just doing your job at that point and 100 percent being involved in it that's right that's right yes yeah. but, but particularly important is the fact that the self is not involved yes but actually even the weeds are not involved either <laughs> they have no choice. Well, they have no choice, but you're also not involved within, you know, we, we, we don't think one weed, two weed, three weed, four weed. We, we just weed. It's just, it's just it's, bump, 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 and that's just well, the yeah. act of it. Matter of fact, uh, I miss having people here because I have to do all the weeding, and I'm, real, and I'm really behind. <laughs> I'm yeah, terribly behind. And so, uh, anyway. I, it's, I, that's I, I Wait, won't volunteer. I'm sorry. That's right. Well, no one can. Anyway, that's my tomorrow and my. Uh, yes, Dan. So, how is it that you're able to use thoughts, words, concepts to invoke a state of pure awareness? I don't think you can. Well, it all depends. I know, but I, you know. Um, I thought you were going to go someplace else with that, and I, I was so. I, um, uh, so I think a state of awareness. It doesn't have to be on the seat. Needn't be meditation. Needn't be in the zafu. Needn't, it needn't be Buddhist. It's a natural thing that we do. And Buddhism is about getting rid of things which are not necessary in your life and they cause you trouble. Which are our selfishness is is one one part of that, or self self-centeredness or that, that that kind of thing and and we don't need that those are the things that cause us stress you no know, we we and those are the things particularly cause us fear we fear for ourselves or of course some, sometimes ourselves includes others and we fear for others but fear is you know uh, once again as i've said before suzuki roshi said at one point uh i know i've said it in the past in the past few months, when he was saying again, he said, um, I don't have any fears, uh, I don't, uh, but if a tiger was started chasing me, I'd run away. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, that's, you know, so of course, fear is natural also. So where did you think I was going with that? Uh, I actually, I, I was ahead of myself and I shouldn't have thought it. Go ahead. Oh, what, what in the, oh where, now I've made it, so I have to answer that question. I was, I was going to answer that, you know, that there are, that Buddhism doesn't say you have to live in this world of no thoughts. That would be really foolish. Buddhism says, of course, there's that world. Of course, you live in that world. Of course, that world is natural, but it's only part of the picture. 
And by having the, the full part of the picture, it makes our life much more fuller and content. And so therefore, there, so I thought you were going to go into saying, uh, well, what's your, how, how can we not think? And of course, you're thinking what I'm thinking right now. Harvey just came up to show what she's thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey's here. Harvey's here for the second time today. Here's, let's, let's see Harvey's tail here. No, there you go. There's Harvey's tail. Is that nonsense, cat? That's, that's, no, no, no. that's yeah. nonsense, cat. Not nonsense, cat. No, no. No, absolutely no, not. No, boy, no. Yeah, yeah. That's enough. That story. would have been a whole that, different ending to that, that story. story. That story. <laughs> Like you give up Buddhism, you know, <laughs> cats and fingers and stuff like that, and arms. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> you said that this is beyond our knowledge. Is it beyond our insight? Ah, what does insight mean? Insight's a whole other story. Is insight realization? If insight is realization, uh, you know, in the that that's that's the insight that takes place simultaneously at, at, a, at a point. That's the real, that's the first realization that I mentioned uh, 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 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago. But if you say, but if you talk about, you know, having insight, do, having intuition, intuition occurs to us in words mostly. So it's all depends. It's, it's a complicated answer uh, because of the word insight. I mean, there's insight meditation, but I've never studied insight meditation, so I'm not quite certain what they mean by insight. I assume they mean realization, but I, I, I don't know. In that case, yeah, realization is beyond thought, yeah. Beyond all, everything that's concrete. Yes, John. Isn't that great, John, that thing, the how, how well, I mean, I, I read that text this morning. I said, "Oh my goodness, that's my, that's my, that, oh my goodness, that's my, uh, that's my talk." I was just going to say the same thing that I was really, the connection between I really felt like in that, um, in that segment I sent you that uh, Roshi was really speaking to this segment of the Genjo Koan and how the 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 bird and the fish, really, they're only function is to exist within their worlds, their simple worlds. Yes. And now she, Suzuki Roshi said how we shouldn't really seek out excitement. You know, the, the bird's not seeking out excitement. The, the fish isn't seeking out excitement. It's just living in its world. And how we should try and, he spoke to how we should just try and keep our lives simple and be attentive to our simple lives and not seek to go outside our realms to what might be, you know, it's beyond it. It, it. We should just stay within ourselves and be conscious of being within ourselves. And I just, I was really touched and moved by that, which was why I sent it to you both. Yeah. That, but that last sentence that, that, that you said was very good too. Okay. Sandy's, Sandy's giving the talk in two weeks. <laughs> you know, while we were talking, actually, I had this thought about the, the way seeking mind talks, is it what we would assume it to be, which is our minds seeking the way, or is it the way seeking our minds? Um, I, I'm I, I'm not good at puzzles, um, but because uh, I, I I'm a uh, uh, you might say well actually the answer to that was going to be silly, so I I think I'll skip that part. Um, uh, um, but no, way, way, the, the way seeking mind talk actually is kind of a one one word that developed, I suppose, at San Francisco Zen Center after our time. When we were there in, in, in the beginning, there there was there were, well, student students didn't talk, but also they didn't have that. But but I know that San Francisco had it when we came back, and I and I don't know how if it's if it was simultaneously spread across America without anybody started or not, I, I don't know. But so it, it means actually kind of like, tell us how you got here in a way. That's part of it for, for most people. 
but you can make of it whatever you like. I mean, everyone has done it so well. They've had just two, but they've done it in different in different ways, and I, it's very good. So don't worry about that part. You, know, you can tell us what your understanding is, but forget about that your part. Uh, but but as far as the but as far as uh, your way seeking mind, you know, we we're here because of ultimately. Uh, if you if you if you hear more than a few you know a, a short time, you're generally here for for because you have the way seeking mind, or because the way sought you out. <laughs> yes, uh, but um, that and that's uh, that's part of the thing I mentioned about you know uh, Buddha nature. So of course we, we can say, do we sit because uh, do we? I mean. Uh, do we sit or does or do we sit because of our Buddha nature? And it's a good question, but I, I don't know the answer. My my Buddha nature so far has been unknowable to me. But I believe in it. Yes, Sadie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you're talking about what John just mentioned, uh, I've always found that uh, I've been drawn to Buddhism. I don't know what reason or why, but it started when I was in like elementary school and I had discovered the library. Well, don't and, don't tell us don't, oh. don't don't tell us you talk now. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that I think a, a lot of people are actually drawn to it. You know, it's just there's something that it just seems so inviting. Um, you know, it's so different from Christianity or Judaism. So it's a, a lot of people are fed up with those traditional styles of religion. And what's nice I've always found about Buddhism is you can look at it as a religion. You can practice it as a philosophy. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, it's kind of an open framework that your life just sort of um, adapts to and, uh, or you adapt to it. I don't know, but, um, Oh, about your speech, uh, you were talking about uh, moments of realization of which throughout my practice, I've had small moments of, of types of realization, but they, you can't hold on to them. You can't know them really for any length of time. Um, that's what I found. The more I tried to grasp onto those little experiences, uh, they disappear. I know that I've had them. I can remember some of it, but it just blends away to nothing. Um, and like you were always saying, those little bits of realization aren't that really important. It's not something to dwell on. It's things that might happen, and it's just that's it, something that happens. So that's right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. And we will go. Uh, thank you for all for, for being here. Then, then no we'll, comments from Jane. <laughs> oh, yes. Let's have Jane. Oh, Jane's got a, yeah, let's have Jane. Oh, here, Mitch has got a hand up too. Mitch. Oh. Can, I, can I jump in late here? Of course. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. To comment on what Sandy said, and I don't need to contradict Sandy, but when I've had my moments of realization, they don't go away. They become part of me. And then I, I can't. I can't go back to what I was because I'm different after the realizations. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the first things that ever happened to me and it drew me to Peter and Jane was I, I 
I had the realization that things are, are, are they are as they are. And Peter corrected me and said, things um, are as they are. So I came to him with something a little different way of saying it. And after that, I mean, it, it fades, that moment <laughs> fades, but it's, it became part of me. And I, I looked at the world differently after that and that I couldn't <laughs> control everything. I couldn't have, uh, I wasn't responsible for a lot of things. I, I might be able to change it, but I'm not responsible. And it was a huge moment for me. Um, and so, and all these little, I don't know if Peter want to correct, Peter or Jane want to correct me and call the moments of Satori. Is that Satori or well, what do they call these real, what's the? Well, well, it all, it, well generally speaking, Satori, when it's used, also some call, call, sometimes called Kensho, same word, same, same, same word actually. One is a Chinese, one is Japanese, but both are used. Uh, usually is used for um, uh, the uh, beginning realization, but beginning realization can be, can be a very big beginning. Uh, and so, so generally, Kensho is that first time. Okay, so is there a word for little pieces of realization moving your practice forward? Is there a word for that in Japanese? Mitch one, Mitch two, Mitch three. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I don't no, 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 no. Anyway, Mitch, answer your questions. Some people have multiple, have said they've had multiple realizations. And I don't know about the actual use of the word in that way. Uh, but often, very, very, very often, realization uh, it just happens once. Uh, famous one, famous teacher I mentioned this previously, had uh, a Rinzai teacher had was said to have 80. You mentioned it really, really, really recently. Anyway, it was said to have uh, uh, 82 realizations, but each one or something like that. I made up that number, but it was up in the upper, upper, uh, close to 100. Um, uh, but each one obviated the one that came before. I know that, that Hakuin said that he had that's Hakuin, that's realizations. Hakuin. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So I, I don't doubt him. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know linguistically that he say I had. Six, you know, so and so, so so, Kensho's or or Satori's. I don't know much. I just don't know the use of the word in, in, in Japanese. Okay, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. We're getting into semantics, and that's not where I wanted to go. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Thank you. Yeah. But I would, I would, I would say, uh, uh, I probably wouldn't. I would try to avoid using little Satori's. Because a lot of people think that there's just one, and so they you you know, they, they they may they may it may cause some semantic difficulty. Yes, yes, Mike. Real quickly here, I remember I was complaining to Jane one time that I have a hard time remembering what our when you have your Dharma talks the key points of it and stuff. And I was going, does that mean I'm not understanding it? And she told me, goes, your brain understands it. Whether you read and call it or not, it's not what's the key thing. It's just a piece of the building block that you, 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 you do retain it. And maybe somewhere down the road, you'll say, oh, now I, I can put these two pieces together and gain something. But I remember that because I was really getting worried that I wasn't being a good student because I couldn't remember parts of the Dharma talk. She's like, you remember it, whether you recall it or not, it's not important. Your brain still remembers it. And even if your brain doesn't remember it, don't worry about that either. Because you know, <laughs> Dharma talks are only there. Well, they're, they're there. I mean, I'm, I try to give you a, a serious Dharma talk, right? Of course. Jane does try to give you a serious Dharma talk. But aside from that, after the Dharma talk's finished, it's over. There's nothing to remember. Nothing to, to not, you know, but sometimes you may, you may get a small, someone else's uh, understanding may make a small change in your understanding. And that, and then you will, without thinking about it, like Mitch said, here's a little different perhaps, but you will in, incorporate it at that point. But then, you know, you don't have to get a catalog in the past of all that you picked up. 
and so and then someone else will say something or more likely you'll experience something and then you'll locate that someplace in your mind that you somehow heard that before and oh now i get it yeah like you said yeah, yeah. so don't 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 learn things from the dharma talk just try to understand and oh i get that i get i don't get that i don't get that oh okay and, and some things may puzzle you and maybe it's the time for them to puzzle you maybe not though mostly likely not anyone else oh I, jane was okay you sandy yeah jane you're next time for a second <laughs> One of the things I've found with this practice is the more I do it, the more I realize I don't know. Uh, yeah. And I also found that uh, the only way I do know or do learn is it, it's, it's not like I, I don't understand or enjoy your talks. I don't really, I read books. I don't really learn that much from books it's just written uh, where i learn is experience by experiencing um, and i i think all buddhist practices are mostly experiential you have to feel it in your gut you have to uh, beyond words beyond actually doing something that it's it's some sort of internalization that uh makes a change in your life where you can uh, like like you were saying learn to drop off the things that aren't important uh, experience joy experience happiness it's it's all ex it's all inside yeah sure that sounds right jane <laughs> well <laughs> Sandy, I was just going to say, you know, uh, I loved the talks the very first uh, year I was in Tassajara, and uh, Suzuki Roshi always spoke in the evenings, and uh, I don't know if I was particularly open at that point because I was so tired or what, but every time he spoke, for, like for the whole time, I always felt that I understood everything he was saying. But when I went outside afterwards, if somebody asked me what he said, I couldn't repeat any of it. I couldn't, <laughs> I could not tell you what the whole talk was about even. I just, uh, it was like, and yet I always felt that it would raise the hair on my head, some of the things he was saying. And I feel like some part of us listens and understands. And m most of us probably just sit there asleep and don't understand. But we do take it in and we do marinate it for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And at some point it becomes us. And when it becomes us, we understand it. And until that time, it's just a foreign piece of knowledge and it sits in there, but it's interesting. It's quirked. Some part of our whole being sits up with it. And at some point we listen and then we understand it. But until we do that, it's, and it's until it's really our knowledge, it, we don't understand it. But I can't tell you how many times I came out of a talk and had somebody say, well, what, what do you think he was talking about? I couldn't, I couldn't even tell the first thing about what he was talking about. And yet at the whole time he was, I was listening to it, I felt like I understood everything. So when I came out, you know, I just, reality hit. And I did not. So I would not worry about that part because I feel like whether it takes one year, 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, whatever, we do understand finally because we do hear what's necessary and we take it in and we don't always use it immediately we may not use it for years and years and it will flower at some point but we just keep on rooting in the ground and growing and at some point you know it will register so don't worry about that part yes Mitch. so it's a lot of fertilizer then jane it's a lot of fertilizer, and that fertilizer comes right from us. <laughs> yes. That's why we. That's why, that's why we call the compost pile the Dharma pile. <laughs> <laughs> it's all trash and garbage, but <laughs> it produces the most incredible soil. <laughs> yes, Mitch. Um, I went to a, a, a seminar with a visiting teacher, uh, a gentleman named Nishio Setsei. Um, this is an Aikido thing. And uh, he says, uh, there's only one technique. He says, we only vary it for you so you don't get bored. 
<laughs> I think this is I think this is what we're dealing with here. That's part, yeah, it's <laughs> it much, could be that. Yeah, it's much like that. Yeah. <laughs> it could be that. Yeah. But it's actually two words because we're very polite. Two words are a uh, please sit. <laughs> oh, also, I, I would say one other thing is that the word satori and kensho and all of the Japanese words for understanding something, I think it's a better word in English is awakening. I really like the word awakening because it, it makes more sense to me that that's what's happening. Not that we're getting some special experience, but that we're waking up to something we already know and have forgotten. And so awakening makes way more sense to me than Kensho or what does Kensho mean? It means first sight, right? Uh, I can't remember. Fresh seeing or fresh sight Ken is, or something. Ken is, Ken is, Ken is see. Yeah. yeah. And show is first. No, maybe not. It could be though. It is. is it? I th I'm pretty sure. But well, it's it like some that cases, anyway. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so it's like it's implying the same thing. You're seeing something from a new perspective that you didn't see before. You're looking at the exact same thing, but you're seeing it from another perspective. Like if you see the ground and then you go up in an airplane and you see the ground from an airplane, you have a completely different perspective of the ground. That's the kind of seeing I think awakening means. It's not that you didn't know something, it's just that you didn't understand that you knew it before. It's like knowledge in you that sits there marinating and you haven't put it together. So I don't think it's like a brand new experience. I think it's a brand new awakening to the same thing. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Great go. Rachel wanted to speak. Oh, oh thank Rachel. you, Rachel. How about it? Oh, I thought I could slink away. Yeah, um, I missed it. Yeah, <laughs> close. Um, I was thinking about the body sense. How eyes will close. You can dart. You can move, and you don't even see why you're uh, avoiding something, but your body senses. Uh, a danger, um, like this morning, there was something that fell, and my I I turned completely, and I hadn't seen what it was start to fall. Nothing. I was just standing there, but my um, do they call it the proprioception? Any rate, my body and my senses um, knew there was danger. I mean, they, they logged it before, before uh, I was aware of it. And that happens so often. And sometimes I, I think my, uh, or e everyone's um, consciousness and awareness, I, they do know something and then something happens. And that which I didn't know, I understood. Um, I show comprehension by responding in a certain way. And I had not sat down to figure uh, something out, sort of like writing and creativity, that something can come together and I am not sitting it, sitting down saying, well, let's see, I know that and I learned that 10 years ago. And if you think about that and you put it together, it, it's as though uh, there is a formation and a creation that it's not under my um, deliberate intellectual manipulation. And um, anyway, I, I hope that's hope for I can, un I'm understanding things that I, I'm, I, I think I'm bewildered by, but it is in hope that I really understand it. And a couple months from now, it'll all come together. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if sometimes, uh... You know, the old saying, eyes in the back of her head. Yes. You know, I wonder if that isn't true. <laughs> oh, it's, 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 it's definitely true. You can you can decide to investigate it. Just look at somebody for a long time who's far away from you. And finally, they'll 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 they'll, they'll turn around and look, look at you. It's very easy to do. Try to sneak up on a cat that's awake. <laughs> 
That's another one. Yeah, that's yeah, there's, there's, no a, there's a there's a there's a Dharma question. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Thank you very much. Let's let's do our service and then we'll do our our have our birthday party.